Well, look at this. A Techniques CD Changer SL-MC7, and it has the standard MASH multi-stage noise shaping. So, this unit got brought into me. I've already taken the top off of it, and some of you may spot the problem right off the bat. But my customer called me and said his wife likes this unit because she uses it once a year to play Christmas music. And so she likes it because she can put multiple discs in there and it will change. The problem is when this unit came in, all three of these CDs were laying down in here. Now I think this one took the worst of it. You can see some scratches on it there. This one looks pretty good. Might just need to be cleaned a little bit. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape as well. So the only one that's having a problem is Wow Christmas. And it's definitely got some scratches, maybe some gouges I would say, but it might play. The processor does do a fair amount of oversampling where it decodes more data than it actually needs. So here's the other problem that I see. That right there is a motor and a motor needs a belt to operate. There's no belt on this. I suspect the belt is caught up in the gears right in here and this is the sliding linear mechanism. I can't even move it back and forth. So let's go ahead and pull this top off. So just as I suspected, there's the belt caught up in the gears, which is why this couldn't move back and forth. So all I need to do is find another belt. Looks like it's going to be about a three inch belt. Normally you can measure it end to end. So tight right there, it's probably approaching an inch and a half and if I pull it slightly it definitely makes it so you double that distance so it's the total circumference of the belt. So this looks like about a three inch belt. Let me go see if I've got one. Well I did find a belt. It was a little bit thinner but also it's a little bit smaller so it's going to stretch a little bit more and probably give it that surface contact area that it needs to move the mechanism back and forth. So now let's go ahead and put the top back on it and see if it's going to want to play. Okay so I've got the top plate back on it and now I'm just going to try to move the mechanism completely from one side to the other. And if it goes correctly, this should lock up. These should both pull forward and lock the mechanism into place. There it goes. They're both locked. So the mechanism moved over completely. It appears to be in time. And it locked in both of these little swing gears at the same time. So now let's go ahead and give it some power. And so it did a self check, made sure everything was okay. Let's load a CD into it and see what happens. So I'm gonna load the Wow Christmas, the one that is scratched, into slot zero. So now you can see the disc here is in position. So let's ask it to play. And it's gonna load the disc and it appears to be playing. Well, there it is, plain, connected to speakers, and working great. Let's go ahead and clean the optical pickup real quick. These are kind of hard to reach, but I think we can do it. So now, in this model, to clean the pickup, you have to remove the four screws. Now, we'll take the plate off once again. Be very careful when removing this plate. There's a little, tiny lever over here on the side that just popped off. You've got to get it in the right position so basically the mechanism has to be in this position to lift it off because there's a little tiny tab right here. Maybe hard to see. Now that we've got the unit open and we can see the CD mechanism down in here. And all we're going to do is take out this one screw and it's going to let us take this complete plate off so we can access the optical pickup. Once you've got that one screw loose right here, then this will simply open and slide up and out of the way. So now I've just got some very basic glass cleaner, generic. Once the swab becomes a little bit blue, then I'm just gonna shake it a couple times, much more violent than this, because I wanna get all the excess moisture off. Okay, so I've got it back open to the optical pickup, and I'm just gonna reach in here and give it circular motion. Very hard to see the way I'm holding this unit. And 
Next, I'm going to reverse the cotton swab, and we're going to go back in here on the dry end. Once again, circular motions, and I'm rotating the cotton swab in my fingers as I'm doing this to get a fresh surface on the lens the whole time. There we go, all nice and clean. Now with the wetted end, I'm gonna just go ahead and wipe the turntable down. I would actually be holding this with one hand and then swiping the cotton swab across it, but unfortunately, my other hand is busy holding the CD player at a weird angle. So after I've gone ahead and wiped the turntable off, I'm gonna go ahead and switch ends once again to the dry end and I'm just going to dry off the turntable platter. So I think that's good. Let's go ahead and reassemble it now. So I realize it's a little dark, but I have the recording lights off because this uses a visible red LED and a photodiode to detect the presence of a disc so that it can figure out what slot it's in. It just sequentially counts the slots. It has no position encoding or resolving equipment whatsoever. It just counts the slots. So I have three discs in it, and I'm gonna block the light coming in here as much as I can. We'll ask it to play. It's gonna go across, it's gonna come back, and then it should go to disc 51. Oh, sorry, I have disc 102 selected right now, so let's go to disc 64. There it is, now let's go to disc 51. And it found it, no problem. Well, I hope you enjoyed the repair on the Techniques SL-MC7 with a couple of jam discs and a bad belt. If this video has helped you, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell to get future notifications. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.